During the Second World War, a young Swiss doctor, Walter Corti, witnessed the plight of war orphans in Europe and suggested the establishment of a village for children whose lives had been shattered. His idea was widely supported, and this gift from the Swiss nations was set up in 1946 at Trogen. It was named after Johann Pestalozzi, the 19th century humanitarian and teacher, whose head, heart and hands approach to education had inspired Corti. Children from seven European countries lived in national houses which they helped to build. The children were later joined by a group of war-affected children from the UK, who lived in two houses called Thames and Stepping Stones. Funds for these houses were provided by the British Pestalozzi Association. The Swiss chose the Ladybird logo because of its international recognition as a symbol of good luck. Inspired by the Swiss village, Dr. Henry Alexander and Mary Buchanan, secretary of the Bishop's Pestalozzi Association, began fundraising to set up a similar village in England. Dr. Alexander was a Jewish refugee from Berlin and a BBC broadcaster. School children from the 60s remember the Ladybird pin sold in aid of Pestalozzi. By 1959, two million of these pins had been sold at a shilling apiece. With this money, UK supporters bought Oaklands Park in Seddlescombe, East Sussex, and the Pestalozzi village opened in 1959, World Refugee Year. Dr. Corti performed the inauguration ceremony on United Nations Day, 24th of October, 1960. Oakland's Manor, designed by Decimus Burton, was set in a large estate overlooking Settlescombe. This enabled additional accommodation to be built. The administrative block was designed by the eminent architect Sir Hugh Casson and was presented by Lord Sainsbury. Oakland's Manor was later sold by the Trust, but the Pestalozzi village still occupies the same site. The first children to arrive at the village were refugees from the displaced persons camps in Europe. They included Armenians, Austrians, Hungarians, Latvians, Poles, Russians, Ukrainians and Yugoslavs. The conditions and deprivation they had experienced meant that arriving at Pestalozzi was like a dream. Simply having food was a new experience. Their arrival is recalled by Anoush Kamajian and Amina Korda, who came from DP camps in Germany. When we drove up that drive, you know, and I don't know whether you know what it looked like in those days. With the, the manor village. house. It was With amazing. the manor house. It yes. was like, like, like a paradise. Paradise. Yeah. A little paradise. Came up to that. It was the first thing we said. Oh, oh my it God. It looks like paradise, you know. The trust was supported entirely by donations. In 1960, an appeal was launched and over 70,000 letters were sent out to women's institutes, schools and colleges. The response was wonderful. Money poured in, as did visitors and the press, including Richard Dimbleby's 1960 Christmas broadcast. The village in Seddlescombe was pronounced a success. In 1959, the displaced persons camps in Europe were abolished, and the Trust changed its focus to providing education opportunities for children of refugees from further afield. In 1963, 22 Tibetan children arrived at the village, refugees from settlements in India. The Dalai Lama had appealed for help on their behalf. These children were accompanied to Pestalozzi by resident lamas and house mothers. They attended Sedlescombe Junior School and later Claverham College and other local schools. Cal Sang Yanki has remained at the village throughout her working life where she has been a support not only to Tibetans but to students from other countries represented at the village over the years. The Dalai Lama kept close ties with the village. The Tibetans were followed by refugees from Vietnam, Palestine and Biafran war in Nigeria. They were joined by children from extremely poor backgrounds in Thailand, Nepal and India. They also lived in national houses with house mothers of their own nationality and appropriate shrine rooms. During these years, the village adhered to the Pestalozzi head, heart and hands philosophy and the children were involved in the building of houses and workshops and running the village farm. 
In 1996, a changing world saw the introduction of a new programme for Pestalozzi. Since then, students from poor backgrounds in Africa and Asia, who have no chance of long-term education, have come to the village to study for the International Baccalaureate Diploma at Hastings College. As well as providing them with an internationally recognised qualification, the IB course includes 150 hours of creativity, action and service. These activities embrace the head, heart and hands philosophy and involve students in local community life. Countries now represented are India, Nepal, Tibetan communities in India, Zambia and Zimbabwe. There are plans to increase the number of students. An outreach education programme in which students participate is working with 11 local schools. Pestalozzi alumni, like all of us, have followed a wide range of paths through life, many working in engineering or medicine and other fields much needed in their home countries. For 50 years, the Trust has evolved to reflect ever-changing human needs and its diverse cultures have been a unique window on the world for this quiet corner of rural Sussex.